you. Hmm. And thank you for the, the lovely introduction. And I'm Grace Sarah, the art, art curator for the university. And I wanted to talk a little bit first about what visual thinking strategies is. Um, it is a teaching method that was designed to transform how students learn using art as a tool to aid in the development of visual and critical thinking skills. And it's referred to as VTS. So VTS was developed by a cognitive psychologist whose name is Abigail Hausman and a museum educator, Philip Yeniman, who was the director of education at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. It's not a curric an art curriculum, but it's a facilitation method that fosters collaborative, inclusive, and community building dialogue. Using VTS in medical education is not new. However, using it to train students to have the ability to visual to translate the visual literacy learned from reading artwork into visual literacy when reading ultrasound is innovative. And also using it as a tool to help students become aware of implicit bias is also a new way that it's being used. I also think that this is really important and, and unique in the sense that we are using the university art collection. Oftentimes, visual thinking strategies is part of a museum uh, education course where I train to do visual thinking strategies, but using it in this um, study allowed us to fulfill our mission of, of using art to educate and transform our students' lives. And we'll hear a testimony from one of our medical students that in fact does. So Kelly, the next slide. I'll just talk a little bit about you know, the, our problem statement. So implicit bias suggests that people can act on basis of prejudice or stereotype without intending to do so. With this understanding, we know that implicit bias can impact the way that healthcare providers assess their patients. By studying art, we explore unconscious implicit biases that affect our decisions, our choices and beliefs about race, gender and social status. We apply our own experiences, thoughts and feelings into our interpretation of our work. What we learn may be at, at odds with our stated values and it oftentimes reveals that those with different life experiences interpret artwork very differently. So in our study, VTS was used with a group of medical students who were learning to interpret ultrasound imagery and art therapy students who were learning to interpret the art images produced by their art therapy clients. And for both students in these disciplines, uh, we were exploring the use of VTS to enhance observation skills, which included increasing awareness of how implicit biases may influence their perception of visual images. And as Grace said, the BTS sessions were facilitated by students in the university's art administration program. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we wanted to design a BTS training program using art from the university art collection that would help medical and art therapy students increase their observational and visual literacy skills so that they could enhance their assessment skills as they gained awareness of implicit bias with regard to interpreting ultrasounds and patient artworks. Next slide. <clears throat> After IRB approval, this flyer was circulated to first and second year medical students and to all art therapy students. We had four art administration students who participated who were enrolled in a class on Monday nights when our VTS sessions took place. Next. Uh, we had two assessment in instruments that we administered online for this study. Um, one was a pre and post survey uh, that was adapted by a Texas test study that was on uh, visual thinking skills and engineering. Um, our second assessment was a uh, personal self-assessment of anti-biased behavior from the Anti-Defamation League, um, which was most appropriate at the time. 
some of the sample questions from both of our assessments. Um, these included questions from about general thinking, as well as one's own personal practice. And there was also a focus on the use of BTS, as well as implicit biases. So some of these questions are how art can challenge one thing, one's thinking, um, has BTS, uh, BTS has the potential to change the way I practice as a health professional, and implicit biases can perpetuate healthcare disparities. <clears throat> so the 50 participants who completed their pre-assessments could select one of two scheduled BTS sessions. One was in September and one October. <clears throat> Due to COVID, the sessions were offered virtually. In the session, participants saw an ultrasound image followed by the VTS questions, two paintings from the university art collection, each followed by the VTS questions, and then another ultrasound image. For the second painting, we asked everyone to take five minutes to first draw what they saw before answering the VTS questions. So, and then we had a focus group. <clears throat> You'll hear more about that. I thought we would give you an opportunity to um, experience BTS, but maybe we could all um, try it. How many participants do we have in the room at this point? Let's see. There, there are nine of us. There are nine counting the presenters. Okay. <laughs> What do so, you think? I think we should just do it briefly. Okay. I, I think it might be fun. So Kelly's going to ask the questions and then I'll step in after to kind of, we're going to facilitate together. Yeah, so we start BTS by asking participants, what is happening in this picture? So anyone can yeah, answer. Unmute, right? yeah. Okay, should we answer, we'll answer aloud? Oh. Yes. yes. Um, it looks like coercion, maybe. Like he's coercing the man to take something. So, so when you do VTS, the facilitator asks, what do you see in this picture? And then the response will be sort of reiterating, like to, to clearly restate what you said. So I would say in response to um, that you interpret this as that one man is, uh, um, you know, um, using coercion, coercion to uh, have this other man take a drink of something in the glass. And this also offers opportunities when you're working with students to introduce different kind of vocabulary. It could be art vocabulary, it could be other things as a way for them to think. So what do you see that makes you say that? The man who is looks unconscious, um, and then the other man is, I guess, putting the drink right in front of him and holding him up, trying to get him to drink whatever is in the glass. And I have I have allowed other participants to unmute themselves to participate as well. So, great. Um. I see someone uh, who is sick who needs, uh, who's getting help. And what do you see that makes you say that? Uh, it looks like I see a, 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 a man with a warm embrace around and trying to help the man who is sick and needing to, some, maybe he needs a drink and it's just hard to swallow and he needs, he's trying to help him. Mm -hmm. I don't see coercion. So that's interesting that we see the same thing, but we're seeing it differently. One, one because of his unconscious state, it feels like he's being, you know, coaxed to do this. Where you're seeing more of of him um, uh, in a warm embrace. So same, same image, very different perceptions. At this point, uh, we ask participants what more can we find? And so we encourage, you know, people who have not spoken to share their thoughts. 
one thing could, as I look at the image, it, 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 it could appear that the, the black guy is sort of rejecting, sort of pulling himself away um, from somebody who is trying to give him something that he's not sure that he wants. I, I, I say that because there's a, although there is a sense of pain there, there's a sort of grimace of saying, well, no, I don't want that. Although the other hands, the hands that are on the, the bed don't seem to reflect that distaste. But, um, but yes, but the, the face looks like, look, 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 I don't want that, please leave me alone, kind of thing. And the, so that's, that, that's, what I, that's what I see. At, at least that's one interpretation. And really, VTS, there isn't a wrong or yeah. right answer when you're, it's really more about observation and yeah. that connecting with dialogue of that you're both seeing the same thing, but you're, you're reading different things into it. Yeah. And that's the whole approach with, in the past, art education was about telling you what to think and what to see. And VTS allows you to see and come up with your own interpretation. But that looking and questioning is really forcing you, what more do you see? You know, what more is going on here is the encouraging that sort of to develop really keen observation skills. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the two images and how they were selected and why. So we worked with a team of students, two uh, graduate students in the arts administration program and two graduate students in the fine arts program. And they looked at art in the University Art Collection with the two goals of one, using a work that would develop keen observation and critical thinking skills. And number two, one that would help make students aware of implicit bias, especially the, the concept of when assessing patients or assessing patients' artwork. So the one on the left is done by a previous faculty member whose name is Peter Williams and it's titled Barcelona. And it's based on a, a, a self-portrait by Goya of a uh, self-portrait with Dr. Ariata. So that sort of the white coat is what medical students really pick up on that caregiver aspect. And, but Peter Williams is um, making more than a commentary on, on you know, uh, representing himself. Uh, and his sort of personal experience in healthcare. He suffered a tragedy earlier in his life, an accident, but he's also really making lots of commentary on race and culture. And if you look really careful in the foreground, you see all these little elements. First of all, you see a Barcelona chair, which is like a quintessential mid-century modern piece of furniture. But also you see a McDonald's cup with Ronald McDonald and you see this foot and there are a lot of things that are going on in that sort of red blanket area. But if you start to look around the composition, you see a mouse and you see mouse ears behind the, the, the patient or the African-American man. And, you know, he makes this commentary on... Um, uh, minstrels and this idea of, of cultural stereotypes. But then also he removes the mouth of the, of the doctor or the caregiver and he mm -hmm. accentuates the nose to be pig-like and then the same with African-American man that they're sort of accentuated features. So I think the students really believe that this not only would force people to look and think and try to assess what's going on in this work of art, but it was also to think about stereotypes. Why do I say that? Why do I mention you know, certain things based on race or status, being a doctor versus a patient? So this was really loaded with symbolism, but also with lots of imagery. And the painting on the right was selected because it was a little more ambiguous. And this is called Seawall by Huey Lee. Smith and this painting is more minimal and more surreal. So there was a great deal of critical thinking necessary to come up with an interpretation. 
So it was the, the, the four uh, graduate students not only selected the work, but they were facilitators in presenting the visual thinking strategies to the medical students and art therapy students. So for the medical students, we uh, Dr. Ampanza, who is an emergency room physician and uh, teaches year, uh, all four years ultrasound imaging. Uh, Wayne State was one of the first schools in the United States to utilize ultrasound imaging in first and second year curriculum. So this it was really important for us to be able to show them how they can utilize these skills that they're learning, not just for medicines, but also for interacting with their patients. So the image on the left is a normal image. The image on the right is an abnormal image of ultrasound. And as you can see, the more white that you see in the right one, it shows the abnormality here. And I'll go to the next slide. So these are some of the responses that we received um, while looking at this image and um, in response to the question of asking what participants see. So to begin with, um, it was a lot of the uh, literal descriptions within the painting, the Mickey Mouse ears, the McDonald's cup, the colors. Um, we also looked at the differences between the figures. As we asked them to explain why they saw or why they said what they saw and what more they can add, um, we got into consumerism and materialistic concepts and the duality of the figures. Um, there was more of a narrative that they constructed behind the image. So when looking at the second image, um, participants really looked at the figure and her positioning. Um, and they also started to look at the entire composition as a whole. When we asked them, uh, why do they see that and what more they can add? Um, there was a common theme of freedom and openness. Um, a lot of them talked about our heart and being connected to the land or these blocks that we put around our heart. Um, there was also a narrative of a journey and of, you know, why is this figure there? What brought her there and where is she going to go beyond that? We invited the first 25 who signed up to participate in a focus group to hear their experiences with BTS. But as it happened, the med students had a change in schedule which prevented them from participating in the focus group. We did ask them to answer the focus group questions in a Qualtrics survey. And so therefore these comments represent both the in-person focus group comments and the survey answers. So looking back at our original objectives for the study, some focus group responses show that students believed their observational skills were increased and they increased awareness about how implicit biases could influence perception and they valued learning with students from another discipline. Um, we have an example of a medical student's perspective uh, next. Oops, no audio. You wanna share your sound, yeah. There's no audio on it. Can you play it from outside of the PowerPoint? From a link? Yes. Hello, my name is Devin Gupta. I am... Go ahead, it's, it's working, Kelly. Now you can hear it? No, we can't hear it. When you did it the other way, we could hear it. How about I share my screen? I think I, it played from mine. All right. Yeah. You hear audio Kelly. now? No, it's, we can't hear anything, Kelly. Okay, I'm gonna try mine. 
This is worth the one minute wait, so. <laughs> Hello, my name is Devin Gupta. I am a second year medical student. Just, I have just played that way. School of medicine. I recently participated in the Visual Thinking Strategies Workshop, Enhancing Observational Skills Through Art and Imaging. And this is my feedback for the workshop. <clears throat> so personally, I felt that this workshop really helped me in looking at an ultrasound as a story or as a whole, rather than looking at the individual parts of the ultrasound. Uh, before this workshop, I feel like I focused on separate, unrelated parts of the ultrasound, but this workshop helped me in understanding the whole picture of it. I think the greatest benefit of this workshop came from realizing the importance of interprofessional teamwork. So while looking at the art pieces, there were many aspects that the art therapy students easily picked up on that I would have never even thought of. It showed me the importance of differences in perspective from people of different backgrounds, even for something as objective as an ultrasound. So this brings me to my last point that although I only participated in one of these workshops, so I can't say that my understanding of ultrasound imaging has drastically changed. Um, <clears throat> I can say that my confidence in reading ultrasound has improved because of it. With that being said, I believe that this visual thinking strategies workshop could apply to radiology, MRI, or CT imaging as well. So thank you for your time. Okay, next slide. So um, in our self-assessment related to implicit biases, we asked two open-ended questions. Um, and it was for participants to identify areas of growth and goals. So some common themes that came up from their uh, answers was um, advocating and speaking up, educating, reflecting on their own biases, and getting involved in organizations and communities. Let's see here. Um, in summary, our data consists of pre and post questionnaires about the experience of VTS itself, as Kelly shared with us earlier, and the implicit bias self-assessment, which she just spoke of, and the transcripts from the VTS sessions. But our participant numbers were really too small to make interpretations from the differences between the pre and post questionnaires although we're still reviewing them to determine what in addition we can learn from them. With this to say, these findings are based on the focus group and the qualitative responses we have. So we heard that the VTS protocol did encourage seeing more from different perspectives, therefore helping students gain assessment skills. And thus our intention to select images from the university art collection to reflect on personal bias also seemed to be successful. Next slide. We've mentioned many of these limitations before, but want to add that we're considering the fact that the process of VTS is the same but each session is distinct based on the composition of the participants, which I think you saw in our example today, people mention similar items in the artwork that the students mentioned, but it wasn't all the same. Um, so each session is a little different. We're also considering to what extent the reflective prompts from the implicit bias questionnaire may have impacted perceptions of implicit bias versus the VTS itself. Next. Dr. Mendez, are you talking about this one? I was going to the last slide, but that's okay. So for as far as implications go, oh, we wanted to be able to um, inform you that this um, 
particular endeavor that we in, uh, embarked on has a lot more um, impact than we originally started out with. We've had, uh, this is our third presentation right now, and we have one more coming up. The first one was an it's a national interprofessional conference. The second was the Academy of Healthcare Communications. The third one is going to be, is this health uh, one here at Wayne State. And the fourth one coming up March 26th is going to be with the Health um, Humanities Consortium National Program that we will be presenting with colleagues who are on a panel from Indiana um, and Kansas, other uh, universities, and they're not all medical schools. So this is a nice opportunity to show the um, injuncture of different programs related to the humanities. Um, more importantly, uh, we were able to do this because we as a uh, group of um, interprofessional faculty were able to um, put our heads together and apply for a small grant from the American Association of Medical Colleges. That allowed us to hire Kelly as a graduate student to coordinate the program, but also allows her then to learn how to manage a grant. So the implications were not just learning about implicit bias and interpreting skills, but also education of students on a larger extent. We had the opportunity to use our own um, uh, art collection at Wayne State, as we've mentioned. So other schools that have contacted us are like, where do we get the art from? And it's nice to say, you know, contact your local art school, but if you don't, look around your own hallways, you probably have something. The university, the medical school in, uh, at Penn contacted us and they're doing um, a recognition of uh, their skills for their medical students using masks. So what kind of mask do you put on when you see your patient versus if you were just interacting with another colleague? So the, uh, uh, Kelly, next slide. This kind of implications that we had were not something that we came up with at uh, the start of this session. Grace, I'll turn it over to you for the discussion. Um, I'll, I'll take it <laughs> like yes. a newscaster, I'll take it. Um, uh, so adding to um, those uh, great points, um, I wanted to return to the focus group statements from uh, the med students that BTS helped them to talk about ultrasound images in an artistic way. And another who said that a longitudinal session might've been beneficial. That brought to mind for me, the example Carl Jung included in the book, Man and His Symbols, that of the 19th century chemist Kekulay, whose dream of a serpent putting his tail in his mouth led to the discovery of the molecular structure of benzene. And next slide. Um, there are lots of examples in scholarly and popular literature illuminating the benefits of integrating the arts and sciences, which suggests potential reasons for integrating BTS in more intentional ways in the education of medical students. And for art therapy, Next slide. Um, art therapists formally and informally assess individuals' artworks produced in art therapy sessions in order to inform their subsequent art therapeutic interventions. The art therapy diversity competencies include the point that culturally competent art therapists should attend to as well as work to eliminate biases, prejudices, and discriminatory contexts in conducting evaluations. Yet a review of literature found no published work on teaching art therapy assessments. So one author, however, suggested that the process through which art therapists learn to interpret visual imagery is parallel to visual thinking strategies. So it was a lot for me to think about as an art therapy educator. And I thought that the intentional selection of artworks and art therapy produced art that have the potential to help students explore their implicit bias as they're learning to interpret artworks may be an important pedagogical strategy for art therapy assessment classes. And last. So we wanted to open it up now to you for questions, but I'd like to go around the room and I'll start with John. John, can you tell us what your background is? 
Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, uh, I mean, my, my professional background. Professional background or what? Have yeah, just discipline. Well, I, I'm 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 a retired uh, teacher and 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 an artist. I do art, okay. a lot of artwork that, and that's good and, enough. We just need art, this. okay? Yeah. Okay. Laura, what is your background? Hi, I'm a PhD candidate in social work and anthropology. Awesome. Okay, um, Aria. I have, a, I have a certificate in art therapy. Okay, Aria. Ariel, can you unmute and just tell us your background? Tell you can stop sharing. It's okay. He might have stepped away. Okay, Walter, what is your background? I am a sociolinguist. Okay, and Jacqueline? I'm a communication studies and PR professional. All right, so we have social work, we have communication studies, we've got art, we've got uh, social. It, as you can see right now, we've got an interdisciplinary team here watching this and listening to this. Each of you seeing those images that uh, Grace um, and uh, Kelly were discussing, probably as you saw in the demonstration, John had a very different view from um, Jacqueline in terms of what he saw in that image. So we're thinking moving forward, we have an opportunity to collaborate with you all. We've done this once. We'd like to try it again. It doesn't necessarily have to be medical students. It could be social work students and art therapy students. Social work students are also communicating with patients. Or it could be somebody from, um, you know, any of the other humanities or the communication students. So we'd love to see what you all think uh, about trying a session with VTS with um, Kelly and the art therapy, uh, art administration students running the session for you. It took an hour. So it's a matter of giving up an hour and mm -hmm. learning a little bit of these skills and how you might be able to apply it. So I'd like to hear from Walter first. What do you think, Walter? Is this something that we could do through the Humanities Center with another group of um, uh, another school education or communication or social work? We, we would be delighted to, to, to host it, but um, yeah, sure. Just, um, just let us know how we can participate. Yeah, if, if you, um, and I forgot to ask Grace uh, and um, Holly, do you mind if we share the PowerPoint as a PDF or whatever with, so Jackman can send it out to the listserv since we didn't have many people today and they might be interested. But the only thing before you send it out, uh, Jacqueline, we'd need to add our contact information on the last slide where we say we would like to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Just adding our information there so people can contact us and get, you know, see if they're interested. Uh, Grace and Holly, are you okay with that? Yes. Uh, Kelly, okay. All right. So Laura, would you be willing to participate in a follow-up session at some point? Not right now, but mm -hmm. I know you all have a lot going on, but maybe later in the fall, having a live session? I think I might be. Definitely keep me, um, yeah. Uh, hopefully you'll have my email from this and um, yes. Okay, John. Keep me in mind. Thank you, Laura. John? Uh, Yes, uh, I would like to participate in some. Awesome. Uh, okay. And I'm sure Ariel will join us because she's in the office, so she could <laughs> join us. And Jacqueline, here's an opportunity to invite more students that you know of in communications to be a part of something. Absolutely. That was what we had for you all. We want to turn it over to you to ask us questions. Now, we said we'd give you 15, 10, 15 minutes to ask questions. So go ahead. I guess the only question I had was, since I'm really not well versed in uh, medical anything, um, I understand how important it is to break down and understand implicit bias, but how does viewing ultrasound through art do that? Could you simplify that? Okay, yes, yeah, sure. So in the image where you saw the bird and the blue sky and the gray sky and the water, the water uh, uh, image, 
you had medical students looking more closely at, you know, was that a calm C or not? Similarly, when you're looking at an ultrasound image, it's flapping in and out, flapping in and out. It's live, right? So same like that. They're looking at it and seeing what else was there moving at the same time. Here you had the bird flying in, in as far as the ultrasound. You didn't have something flying out. But if they had a dye in the ultrasound, you may have seen a different color come up, like the blue getting into the red and becoming purple or something. So that helps them to look for, for minute details in the painting and apply that same kind of principle of observation. The, um, likewise, with radiology, we would have the same kind of things happen. So it's I just should... challenging your, your, your original perspective. Thinking deeper than what you're seeing at first glance. And I think that Devin and the and the the medical student, what he said is what he learned from BTS is he looked at the whole rather than just the small parts. He started to to understand how the art therapy students were looking at the bigger image and not just the little details. So I think that idea of he felt that he learned from looking at art, how to look differently at ultrasound. So example, another example of what Grace was just saying, uh, I think Holly or maybe Grace asked, did you see the McDonald's box there? And I don't think a lot of the medical students were looking at the McDonald's box as part of the art. They were thinking of it as, oh, his diet is a problem, right? So looking at it as a bigger picture of uh, that particular patient. I think we had an unintended um, example when we asked the medical students in the first VTS session to talk first about the ultrasound and then our therapy students were allowed to add um, a little bit later. Um, but the medical students found very distinct details and you could tell that they were zeroing in on some things that they had learned in their classes and connecting them to what they saw. The art therapy students, of course, they didn't understand what the ultrasound was, but they saw things like um, the cloudiness or the um, fluffiness or, you know, feeling and, you know, some other senses were evoked. And so that was like completely unexpected for the medical students to look at an image that way. And um, subsequently, I think in their um, post questionnaires that might have been reflected or it might have encouraged them to have the idea to look at the whole, because some of the minute details, if they had looked at the whole, might not have fit with that diagnostic picture. That's a good question, Jacqueline. <laughs> you know, this is just a first start, so we're building on the idea mm -hmm. now. I just wanted to say thank you for the presentation for the opportunity to learn more about what you've done. I think it's so interesting to think how different disciplines can contribute to each other in these ways. And I actually had the same question as Jacqueline. <laughs> and I'm so I'm so glad she asked it. And that really helped me understand that that part of it of how the um, description of looking and talking about um, transferred to talking about the image of the ultrasound as it had with the artwork. Um, and I apologize, I actually have to go and drive to campus now. So I, I have to duck out a little bit early, but I'm glad I got to, to be here for most of the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Thank you. I'll be in touch. And I don't know if anybody said this or not, but there was um, one, a student response that had to do with um, realizing that in the sense, there are different perspectives on interpreting art you know, therefore, there are different um, communication styles um, for different patient interactions. Um, and so, you know, coming up with, you know, understanding how to communicate and what perspective might be a patient coming from that might be different from a doctor's perspective. So there's an element of bias uh, in, in that uh, situation as well. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Laura. One of the other things that Bye. I wanted to mention. Bye. Thank you, Laura.
my, uh, one of the other things that I wanted to mention uh, was during the time we were having these um, two sessions, the students were also uh, engaged in a um, uh, professional uh, physician patient uh, course, which was focusing on social determinants of health. So that also had an impact in the way some of the responses from the medical students were coming. Mm -hmm. John, did you have a question? I, you know, I, I find it very fascinating uh, on many levels. As a, as a heart patient, uh, having seen an ultrasound and seeing how amazing they were, they actually, when you actually see them, uh, I began to think about, you know, when I first thought, my God, I'm looking at my own heart. You know, it <laughs> gave me a different perspective right. of what you have inside you. But then looking at it, thinking about it as an artist, you know, the beauty of the human heart is, you know, you know often see the real thing, you know. Uh, it sure gave me a, a real increased appreciation for what they do. Yes. Thank you. Kelly, do you want to share some of your experience as uh, administering this program and your connection with your colleagues from art administration? Yeah, definitely. So um, not only did I get to learn about BTS, I also got to learn and uh, see uh, the progression of a grant um, and which uh, is part of the art administration program. Um, so I worked with another art administration student and fine art students and um, looking through works from the University Art Collection and we talked, you know, and theorized about how art therapy students and how medical students could interpret it. But it just shows you that um, you never know how people are going to interpret it. So as, <laughs> as much as we would um, are trying to, um, of course, direct um, people into thinking about implicit biases, you know, other concepts do come up. Um, and I think it's a great process because it makes you reflect on not only how you perceive how what you think within your own discipline, but it makes you trace back and analyze because within our own disciplines, we're accustomed and get into this kind of program where if you see X, Y, and Z, then your automatic, automatic assumption is one thing. And so it makes us reflect on how we get there in our own thought processes and then see how others have those different thought processes as well. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Okay, so Holly, do you want to share anything about your experience as being a part of an interprofessional team here in terms of just administration of the grant or teaching the session? I would just like to mention one thing. I feel like when we were in the sessions for VTS, I had this perception based on, you know, a very limited experience with medical students that they would be sort of um, very vocal and, and they would be sort of um, more competitive. And they were not. They were really a fish out of water. They really, the art therapy students talked about the art. They were excited about it. They were looking at things. And I remember the first session we said, well, let's hear from the medical students, which I thought was, and even Dr. Ompansa said he was surprised at the medical students. They weren't accustomed to this. And I thought that was really fascinating that they were witnessing these art therapy students that were getting emotional about talking about the artwork and they were having, they were struggling to, to talk about it. So I think that was really interesting. Yeah, and, and I um, totally appreciate that comment, Grace, because it was like they were fish out of water at the time. Uh, they were doing a lot of clinical reasoning in their coursework that was simultaneously happening, but they couldn't see this as clinical reasoning till the art therapy students started talking. Then they're like, ah, okay, the light bulb went off. <laughs> So I think that sort of interdisciplinary, we, I think each area thinks they know, but until they experience what other people take as normal or common, it, so that sort of introduction for them to work together, I think was really valuable. 
Yeah, there was a really good um, quote by an art therapy student. I can add this. I, I put it in one of the slides, but I didn't read it. Um, she said, the subconscious is where I believe biases can become locked in and annoyingly intertwined with conscious thinking. Discussing the images allowed me to be more aware of my reactions to the images I had, which resulted in me questioning and exploring the reactions I had. Uh, so I thought that that was an example of what our therapy students took from this experience. I also want to just say how much I admire and respect the art administration program. It's um, Wayne State is, um, it's like we don't realize the, the um, jewels, the riches we have in the university art collection and how they have been cultivated by Grace Sarah and students like Kelly um, to come to our awareness and appreciation and learning and to use the university art collection in education is innovative. And I just wanna say I so um, respect and I'm, I'm so pleased to be able to work with um, interdisciplinarily with art administrators and um, geriatricians like Dr. Mendez and um, medical students and uh, you know it's, it's, you, it's better when everybody works together from different right. disciplines and we all and learn there from is, each other. I mean we're also used to using the traditional model of lecture and small groups but trying to think outside the box I think is what taught me uh, when I first met Grace and Holly to say we can use medicine with some of what you're doing. And uh, just to divert for a second here, uh, Grace and I did um, a Photoshop um, um, program the, with the diabetes uh, uh, kids, the pediatric diabetes program. We had our students, the medical students go and join them while they're sitting four hours with their hands up, <laughs> getting their blood transfused and going. Um, they took, um, they had a grace gave them a camera they took pictures they brought it and while they were sitting there they were talking to the medical students and interpreting what their pictures meant to them while they were going through these uh, horrible things in their life they're not playing outside on the patio with another kid but they're sitting here for four hours with their arms stretched out and getting their blood from through. so i think you know there are many ways that we can use different modalities and I'm grateful for the time that both Grace and Holly put into this program. And I know that Dr. Ampanza is too. So thank you, take care. And thank I'll you. turn it over back to Walter. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for this very interesting experiment. Uh, as I was looking at, listening to the conversation um, subsequent to, to my, um, observation and I'm, I'm thinking that there is a, a way to try and um, frame the conversation because there I was um, as a black person looking at somebody sort of uh, looking like Hitler <laughs> uh, with, with that sort of mustache sort of, of feeding somebody who looks like um, like like Floyd, <laughs> I mean my my sort of sociocultural sort of frame sort of made me sort of see certain things. So it's not just interdisciplinary because that had nothing to do with social linguistics, but um, the, the sort of frame that I bring to 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 social and cultural and political events and. Um, so the guy didn't have a mouth and uh, he had a little Hitler-like mustache and uh, he was trying to give some, something to this black guy who seems to be avoiding it. Mm -hmm. So that caused my, my observations, right? But then it didn't permit me, that, that frame didn't permit me to, to look at the sort of McDonald imagery and there was an air, Mm -hmm. sitting out there. Now it's good that afterwards I learned that this was a painting from uh, Peter Williams, who was a dear, dear friend of mine. And I, I love know, Peter. I know his political bias and I know that uh, now when he left for years, I, was, I, I missed him. Um, in fact, I was reminded about his uh, work when I saw that um, 
1998, Bell Hooks gave a talk on our campus. She was the keynote speaker in our faculty fellowship. And one of the presenters was Peter Williams. And I said, oh my goodness, Peter, I wonder where he is. But um, yeah, all right, that's enough for me. <laughs> Too much. Thank you very much. That just brings it all together. That's exactly what we thought might have happened. And so thank you for that articulation of your experiences. All right, Jacqueline, do you want to wrap it up? I can close it out. Thank you all so much for presenting. And honestly, I would love um, an update in a, in a year's <laughs> time if you wanted to come back and speak. Um, that would be amazing. Um, and thank you, thank you again for coming to present with the, uh, the Humanity Center. And um, thank you uh, to John and Ariel if you're still there uh, for uh, coming to see this and witness this with me. Um, well, I look forward to the update and the, the recording will be available on our YouTube and um, our website shortly. I will. Uh, Jacqueline, will you add the contact information for the four of us on the last slide? Absolutely. Yes, I can do and that. Then, um, then post. Then you can post it. Okay. Yes. Um, did you. you? Would you be able to forward forward me that information? All you want on there, or did you just want the emails? Just the emails of each of us, but with our name. You can get it from the regular directory. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be okay. sure. To post that. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Bye bye. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Thank you.